this computer. Beautiful. Well, hello everyone and welcome. Um, thank you so much for coming along and joining us for our cooking class tonight, the Big Blue Table with Thermomix. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Natalie Lockery and I'm a Thermomix consultant and team leader for Inspiring Mixers. Tonight is a special class. Um, we have created this class, as many of you know, that um, to support Beyond Blue and mental health. So um, the class will be focused on creating meals that can be shared, as we know that sharing a meal with someone and having a listening ear is one of the most powerful things that we can do. So we hope that we can inspire you um, to make a meal, contact a friend who would love some support and share some meaningful conversations with them. Um, I wanna firstly thank you all for for those of you who registered and said yes to donating we are so so grateful for your generosity and after tonight's session we will be sending a link to you um, to make the donation that you wish so thank you very very much um i would also love if you could interact with us tonight um sorry i'm just letting some people into the waiting room um interact with us tonight we do ask that you stay on mute um but if you could pop some things in the chat box and have conversations with us through there, um, we will be there to answer any questions that you might have. So we are going to get started um, and Laura is gonna kick us off. So Laura, what are you cooking tonight? Hi everybody, um, I'm Laura or Life by Laura underscore Thermomix if you wanna jump on my socials and have a little bit of a look. Um, but tonight I'm doing the tear and share cinnamon scrolls with honey butter. So this one's off cookie do. Um, I cannot recall which collection it is on. If you're interested, if anyone wants to look that up for me, I probably should have. But I'm going to get underway because we've got lots of goodies on tonight. Um, so what I want to ask before we do start, if you don't mind sharing, um, just a nice little, I guess, icebreaker. If you could be anywhere tonight instead of on this big blue table with us online, where would you want to go? Where would you want to go and share a really lovely meal with the people that you care about and, and really have a good time? So let's know. Um, now, my first little step with these scrolls, if you've ever made scrolls before, is just to make the cinnamon filling. I was actually out of brown sugar. So what I've done is I've whipped some up in my thermomix. So if you have never made um, different types of sugar in your thermomix, this is one thing that will definitely cut down your grocery bills. Um, it is just so easy to do with your own thermomix. Um, and that's only two ingredients, brown sugar, which is incredible. So I'm just going to pop the rest of the ingredients in. My butter is super warm in my kitchen, so I have to have my butter in the fridge. It does need to be chilled. So I'm not sure where everyone is tuning in from tonight, but we, I am on the Gold Coast and it is a really nice mild night tonight. So 30 grams, just weighing it straight in the bowl here. So I've just cut it into rough pieces. I've got... Um, 100 grams all up and we're just adding the brown sugar's already in there so I didn't have to do any washing up or anything just left that in the bowl first and just a little bit of cinnamon can't have cinnamon scrolls without some cinnamon I often I don't know about you guys but I'm very much a not measure just measure with my eyes and, and my heart too so um, let me know in the chat box if that is you and you aren't necessarily to a tea with recipes because that's what I love about the Thermix. I've got these guided recipes that kind of keep me on track because I like to get a bit, you know, wild with, with my risk taking and ingredients, but I can always just make them my own as well. I'll well, thank Sarah for sharing that recipe. I feel like it's from the new, one of the newer books, but I couldn't remember which one. Nat said you'd love to be on a holiday with family and friends, somewhere warm by the pool. That sounds perfect. Having some nice and chat. Yeah, I'd love a holiday anywhere too, Jim. Um, beautiful. I feel like I'd like to be in Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii, but I am very much a warm beach kind of person. So hopefully one day I can tick that off the bucket list. So that's just made our nice feeling there. Um, and obviously, you know, if you were watching sugar content or anything that like that, you could adjust things a little bit here. You could get really, you know, if you are a thrill seeker like me, you could get really um, creative and add in some different spices and things in that. Like cardamom would be really nice, I think. Um, let us know if you've got any good ideas on fillings other than, you know, the Vegemite and cheese version of scrolls. 
Um, so it says to transfer that. I'm just going to put that back in there. But I've got my second bowl here handy. So I don't have to do any washing up and I don't have to get interrupted while I'm doing my thing in the kitchen. Just on with it. So I'm going to throw my oven on, which is going to make it about 50 degrees hotter in here. <laughs> and we're going to continue. Now, first thing in our dough is some self-raising flour. In our kitchen, um, we are gluten-free. So today I've opted for just um, some store-bought, but it's actually really easy to make your own flours in the thermomix too and self-raising flour as well. So when I've got that extra time up my sleeve, um, that's something that gives me a lot of satisfaction in being able to mill my own flours and have my you know, pantry all stocked up with all the good stuff. All right, so that's 350 grams. Has anyone else made scrolls before? Um, and if you did, how did you go? Were they a success? All right. It took me way longer to get out. I should have made a bigger hole in the box. All right, and a little bit more butter here. So this is really easy. You don't have to prep ahead too much for this scroll recipe. Um, so if you're like, you know, running out of time, sort of a last minute dish to take over to someone's, you know, someone's house they're having a barbecue, or even if you are entertaining or, or anything like that, um, you can whip these on. You don't have to like freeze the butter or anything with like other pastries and, and doughs and stuff like that. So it's um, a really simple one. We're going to mix that together. So just taking the heavy lifting out of, um, you know, when you make pastries and things, you really have to have that nice humbly mixture with flour and butter. So you're kind of wanting to look for, like, not a real, it's hard because there's flour everywhere, um, and not like a really evenly mixed kind of thing. Sometimes you want a little bit of, you know, chunks of butter and stuff more so in pastry. This one is probably the most mixed you would have with, with the scroll recipe because um, the next ingredient we're going to add in is just some natural yogurt. So most of these ingredients are things people will just have in the fridge already. You know, you might go one better and be making your own yogurt in your TM6, which is one of the biggest cost savers I think we have for the Thermomix, would you guys say? Um, yeah, it saves us a lot of money. So there's about 200 grams of yogurt in here, um, which is that's a really healthy way as well, I think, to make um, a nice kind of bread based or dough based recipe, putting in some like high protein natural yogurt. So you know you're taking something over homemade but healthy for people that you care about that are having a rough time. All right. I need like one more scoop, so I'm going to just open this new one. Okay. All righty. And in this recipe, we just need two egg yolks as well. So nothing in our household, that's for sure anyway, gets wasted. We keep the um, egg whites. We often just, you know, make an omelet or something out of those, but you can do all sorts of things. Um, type in the chat box if anyone's got any ideas for some egg whites. Meringues is obviously a, a pretty popular one. Right now, we're putting that on our dough mode now for one minute. So one minute of kneading um, in the Thermomix is equivalent to about 10 minutes um, by hand. So it's a huge time saver. Now, while that's doing its thing, um, I've got a few more of these cute little cards. So if anyone ever, you know, was interested in supporting Beyond Blue, make sure you jump on their website and, and get around the big blue table each year because they really put on something special and they send out these beautiful little big packs. Um, and it's really got me thinking. So I would love to share a couple of these little questions. Um, and, and it will help, you know, you guys might do a little bit of self-assessment there as well and see how you're going. Um, so one of them would be, what advice would you give yourself, your younger self, sorry? What advice, if you could go back in time, would you give your younger self? Um, now, if you're feeling confident, please share in the chat box. Um, but if not, that's okay too. That's how we're here today. And you might, you know, hear something or see something in the chat box that really, you know, lifts you. Um, and just another one I want to I share with you guys to think about. 
is um, what have you learned about yourself over the past two years? I mean, we could say lifetime as well, but obviously the last two years for a lot of people have been quite tumultuous. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you have learned a few things, new, new things about yourself as well. So have a little bit of think. If anyone wants to type those in the chat box, I would love to have a read of, of those answers. So this is our dough here. So, again, like quite crumbly, you know, and we're going to be just tipping that upside down onto, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, um, one of our silicon um, bread mats. Okay, so these come in a duo. When you host a cooking experience, you can get these for free um, or at a really discounted price. Don't want my rolling pin rolling away from me. Um, so definitely score yourself this duo set because they are so, so handy. And we're going to plonk that on here. I'm going to try and work super quick and I'm going to try and angle the camera down in a moment just to, so you guys can see what I'm doing. But... This is probably one of the things that I am least good at is rolling a really good rectangle with, with any kind of dough. So please share. Like this is why we get together. Who has got any tips for me with this? So one of the, the things that I love most about being a consultant is how much I have learned about cooking because I was never, I was never really a good cook. I didn't have to be to be a consultant. I've got my Thermomix, but... <laughs> Um, I've learnt so much with these group of people, these amazing Femimix ladies and men. So, yeah, I'm um, very thankful for that. Now, can you guys see what I'm doing? I'm hoping that's angled down enough. Someone yell out if you can't. So I'm just making it into a bit of a ball. And there is video, um, I will say. So um, if you press play there on your screen, it brings up a little bit of a video and some instruction as well of what to do with your dough. So you're kind of never really on your own with a the Thermomix. It's always there kind of supporting you and telling you how to do things and all of that sort of stuff. What I find, my little tip that I have managed to come across with gluten-free stuff especially, because it's a bit stickier normally, is um, just lifting it and turning it regularly when you're rolling it out. I don't find I always have to flour the, um, the bread mat. Usually you can get away without it, but I will tonight a little bit more just to make sure. All right. That's pretty good. And obviously you kind of want like a long side with your scrolls. So these bread mats have some really great measurements along both edges so that if you're looking for a really specific size to fit on a tray or in a pan that you can do that as well all right you don't want to have your scroll mixture too thick um because you don't want that really doughy like it will expand as well all right Use your fingers to press together any kind of cracked bits. That's my little <laughs> technique. And oh, oh, like use your hands as well. It's a really, really important tool. Like our hands give us so much feedback and information. If you're just using your um, rolling pin, you're not going to be getting that feedback. You're not going to be feeling where there's really like um, thick wire thickness um, in certain spots. So really use your hands with pastries and, and doughs. All right, I'm happy with it that I think like I said trying to do this quick as well like normally I take my time oh I did stick all righty so simple as this now you spread on your mixture so this is a bit more of a sweeter obviously scroll um your your like savory ones can look exactly the same, you know, the same recipe and, and the yogurt and everything. But there's also lots of other ones on Cookie Do as well. So if you're interested to give them a try, I really hope that tonight has given you a little bit of confidence to do that as well. Oh, I keep sticking with this one. I promise you, it's a lot easier than you think it's going to be, or than I'm making it look. All right, I'll stop playing with it. Okay. So I have got um, one of these flat knives from the mix shop, which has been a lifesaver for me. Sorry, my earphone just fell out. There we go. Are you still, have you still got me? Um, 
yeah, these I never I never owned one. I always tried to make my kids birthday cakes and stuff and just kind of made do with knives that I had. I don't know. Anyway, flat knives are, are amazing, especially for this recipe. So get yourselves one of those. Um, so I'm just going to spread this out as evenly as I can. And the little blobs that I can spread. My kitchen is so warm, like this mixture's gone quite soft, but that'll just make it easier to spread. And I'll just get my spatula. Grab this last little bit. Like I said, no waste in this household. I'll just do that big scoop, remembering to go clockwise along the blunt side of your blade. Protect that spatula and get every last skerrick out so you're saving yourself some dollars. Okay. So if there's any little, like, um, uh, tears or spots that are broken, just expose with your finger as well. It's not going to be a problem. And then just trying to spread this cinnamon butter, which is delicious, as close to the edges as you can. That's really important. And... Um, it's okay, like I said, it's okay if it's not a perfect rectangle it's like me and you can't quite get it. <laughs> nice straight edges. It will definitely work out. That looks uh, delicious, Laura. <laughs> does it? Yeah. It looks good yeah. to me. It's hard to know what the camera is picking up with my lighting. It's perfect. But, um, oh, good, okay. Yeah. yeah, mesmerizing watching you spread it out to be completely actually <laughs> really therapeutic too. Like this is another reason I kind of picked this recipe. It's like I don't know. There's something about making dough and and using a rolling pin, and it's just really homely. And it, I feel like it really grounds us. I don't know. I enjoy cooking for those reasons. So you know, it might not be the same for everybody, but um, you know, if you're looking for something that's really kind of going to Bring back the slowness in your life. I think baking breads and doughs and, and different stuff like that is definitely got to be up there. So what is, you know, some of your favourite dishes to make, guys, that we've got on? I'm done spreading it. But if you want to share what sort of some of your, like, favourite slow down weekend dishes that you, you bake or make. All right. Now the moment of truth this is the it's actually quite easy but I was going to say the hardest part in terms of making sure I nail it it's doing the roll so you want to roll it um from the long side and you know this is by these silicon mats are so amazing because they make it so easy um the fact that it is gluten free just makes it a little bit trickier for me if it sticks like I said it is a bit of a stickier um dough with I feel like the gluten free flour so I'm going to be as careful as I can be here all right so you're literally just wanting to pick up the edge and it really should peel off and roll as long as mine hasn't kind of got too warm and the butter's gotten too kind of melted. So that's kind of where I'm at so far. I'll just pull it forward into the light a bit more. So you want to be careful with this. You kind of don't want to rush that part because this is, you'd ruin the scroll, really, um, the aesthetic of it anyway. All right, I'm going to roll it back that way so it's more in the middle. Again, I mean, if you wanted it to be really pretty for a friend or someone, make sure, like, just cut the ends of the pastry before you roll it so it's not so jagged. But my kids aren't going to mind so much. We might share these with our neighbour, actually. Um, and then this is my little, my little trick, my floss. So this is how I cut scrolls. Everyone's a bit different, I suppose. Make sure you've got an unflavoured floss because that's not a good time. Um, but I just like to, you can either go straight down or you can go underneath the dough and just pull it together and just slice right through. I don't know whether I cut that off then because I was facing the wrong way when I did it. I'll try this end so you guys can see. There we go. So, yeah, just pulling it together and it should just slice straight through. I feel like my hands are so slippery with butter right now that I'm not doing a good enough job, but 
you got me there. You can also, yeah, like I said, just kind of go straight down. So the floss is obviously small enough that it kind of just slices through without squishing the scroll. Um, but I'm going to continue on with these, I reckon. And then literally all I'm doing is I'm going to arrange them in this beautiful rose gold um, tin. This is from the mix shop as well. And my other little hack for any kind of time, poor people, as a busy mum, I never thought I would get these, but I was gifted them and I've been buying them ever since. These are the round, like the pre-cut um, parchment, what do they call it, parchment paper rounds. Um, so this one is for the rose gold tin. But, oh, my God, it's such a time saver. Having these pre-cut, this one's for the Varoma as well. They just save you so much time. And so you're more willing to really tackle those recipes that you think are going to be fiddly and tricky because you've got these little things that you can snap up, um, which obviously right now with our $75 gift card um, for the mix shop is going to mean you can get all of these little nice, you know, um, not necessarily necessities, but things that are going to make your life easier. So, yeah, you guys can come back to me after I pop these in the oven. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. That was great. Now we're heading over to Gemma. I'm just going to spotlight you, Gem. Bear with me. Yep. All good. Perfect. Hi, everyone. I'm Gemma um, Berman. I'm from Sustainable Semi, which is on Instagram and Facebook for those that want to watch me um, on my socials. Today, I'm going to be making the cheese and bacon scones. Um, Similar, obviously, to Laura's recipe, I'll be using um, the dough mode, rolling it out. And these are super versatile as well. So if you wanted to add, like, capsicum or another veg or tomato or something similar like that, that's easily done too. Um, I have made those before. I'm going to press start cooking. It's time to preheat the oven to 220 degrees. And then pressing next is telling me to line a baking tray um, 30 by 40 centimetres wide and set aside. I've just got my tray, my rose gold trays here from the mix shop and I've got my reusable um, mats for it, which is a super, it's a massive lifesaver, not having to go through um, baking paper or anything and they're super easy to clean. So my first step is to put, place half a brown onion, approx 80 grams cut into wedges. So I've just got to cut with here. Pressing next, 200 grams of bacon cut into pieces. So I've cut this up. 20 grams of olive oil. And now it's time to place my splash guard onto my mixing bowl lid to prevent splashing. So um, my next step is to pop it on the high heat mode. So this is just a, a safety function to avoid any oil splatters or anything like that. So you just place it on and it locks automatically when you close the lid. So this is going to basically saute it for seven minutes on the high heat. So you'll probably see some steam coming out of here. Um, yeah, one of these function, functions that's going to mix. Um, has to obviously cook at a very high temperature so save you getting out your fry pan and cooking your bacon and onion but that has seven minutes um, to cook so I'm going to hand it over to um, gonna hand it over and um, Chrissy is going to be making something for you. Thank you Jem. Um, I definitely love the high heat mode of the TM6 it saves all that mess that you get on the stove which is fabulous. We're going to jump over to Sarah for Sarah to make us some quick bliss balls and then we'll be jumping over to Christy. So I'm just going to um, change the spotlight. Bear with me. All righty, over to you, Sarah. Thanks, Nat. So I'm Sarah. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram as Farming Thermo Mum. Tonight, I decided to cook some bliss balls purely because they're nice and quick. Um, they're a recipe that I've created myself and I've moved it on to created recipes. So I've got it saved in my week. I'm gonna go start cooking. And these are just a really, really quick, quick recipe. Um, most of the things you'll find that you have in your pantry already. So 50 grams of oats, and then we're gonna go 50 grams of almonds. I'm just tearing in between 
Um, because it is a created recipe, um, I do just have to tear, because I've got all my dry ingredients set in one step, I could have changed it, um, but it is just nice and simple to have all the dry ingredients here. So 20 grams of cocoa. You could use cacao as well. Um, I'm gonna be sharing these with the kids. So cocoa is um, a safer option with them. Next, we are going to go 50 grams of walnuts. I love these ones because there's just no nasties in there. All the ingredients are um, just really great superfoods. Next, we're going to go 40 grams of sunflower seeds, 40 grams of pepitas, uh, sorry. Yeah, sunflower seeds and then pumpkin seeds. And then we're also going to go 100 grams of dates. We're just gonna pop all those in there. And we're going to go um, six seconds, speed six. So it's already programmed in. I just have to turn my dial and it's just gonna mix everything. Up. So depending on how um, hard your dates are, you might just have to blitz it for a little bit longer. So you'll find this is, um, it's blitzed up really good. But if you've got some dates that are a little bit harder, you'll just have to check. You just want it as um, a real sort of crumble consistency. So no big lumps in there. I'm going to go to my next step. Um, 25 grams of honey. So it's just, a nice amount of sweetness, not overly sweet. Oops. And I'm just gonna drizzle that in there. I don't know about everyone else, but when I deal with honey, it goes everywhere. It's <laughs> normally a disaster. I normally have kids in the kitchen that go around like licking up honey off the bench. It's ridiculous. So you could use other sweeteners as well in this. Something like some um, um, maple syrup as well. And now I'm going to also add 25 grams of MCT oil. So I never used to use MCT oil, but um, I just started being more conscious of what I was eating um, post kids. So I normally try and eat a bit more low carb now. Um, and this stuff is amazing. If you haven't heard of it before, definitely look it up. So MCT stands for medium chain triglyceride. So really, really lots of um, great benefits with that one. And next I'm just going to add 170 grams of peanut butter. So this is homemade peanut butter. It's just peanuts. So that's it. And I added a little bit of that um, MCT oil as well. So this is a great saving, um, making your own peanut butter like a lot of other staple ingredients. Some other staple ingredients we cook are um, the likes of wraps. I make my own mayonnaise. It's really nice knowing what is going in your food. Oops, I've already hit 170 there. Um, and everything is so much fresher. I'm sure all of our Thermomix owners would probably agree with me that making your own fresh, um, you know, mayonnaise, wraps and things like that, it just tastes so much nicer. Um, next, we're going to go 10 seconds, speed five. And all mixed up. I don't know if you can see that. I don't have my lighting's a bit off tonight. Um, all mixed up together. And now we can just roll it in some coconut. So I've got some desiccated coconut and I'm just gonna get some little balls, roll them up. So again, this is my go-to. If I have someone popping over um, for a cuppa and I don't have anything ready, these are my go-to because they're just so quick. I've never come across anybody that doesn't like a whistle. 
we keep them in the freezer as well. So quite often if um, you just need that sort of sweet afternoon pick me up, um, you can just pull them out of the freezer to give them five minutes or so and they're right to eat. Is everyone else making their own bliss balls? I feel like it's it's just our go-to. We do lots of different flavors as well. Some nice um like carrot cake bliss balls. What other flavors is everyone else making? So I'll just do a couple of these. I'm sure nobody wants to stand here all night and watch me roll bliss balls. We've all done that before. So I will just get a couple done, cover them in our coconut. And then I will pass it back to you, Nat. So, oh, beetroot bliss balls. Yep, delicious. And that's the great thing with cookie do. So you can just, um, you know, type in bliss balls in, you know, using your tags even. Um, and it, there's so many different recipes. And don't forget about recipe community as well. So I do need to um, upload this recipe to recipe community but you'll find so many great um, bliss ball recipes on there as well. So this will make 24 um, and I make them about 25 grams each. So, so quick. Um, yeah, and I'll keep going with that if you want to um, pass it back, Nat. Thank you, Sarah. And just we have one question in the chat box from Gemma um, and I thought it would be good to get you to um, give us a bit of an update. With the MCT oil, in terms of the flavour, what would you sort of say it's like? Is it strong in um, flavour? No taste. Like if it tastes like anything, it would be a little bit like coconut because um, that's where it derives from. They, so they pull the, um, the best fats from the coconut oil. But it's most of the time you will find it's tasteless. So I put it in my coffee as well. So I make myself bulletproof coffee and it does not affect the um, taste at all. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. All righty, we're going to jump over to Christy now. Beautiful. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Christy. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Island Thermo Journey. Um, so I'm doing a chicken korma with cashews. Um, I have been wanting to try this one because I've made my own korma spice blend. So I'm going to be real quick here. Let's go straight into it. So 30 grams of ghee, which has already started to melt on me. One thing I love, I mean, this isn't, um, this is store-bought, but you can also make your own butter and ghee and all sorts of things on for, uh, with your hermit. So it's a huge, huge cost saver because um, ghee can be really expensive. So um, I've got all my ingredients already done. So I'm going with two dried bay leaves, two whole cloves, some onion, some ginger, garlic, roasted cashews, I'm skipping the chilli because I am definitely not a fan of spice. So in all that goes, I've got some salt, uh, some turmeric. So I asked for a quarter of a teaspoon, but I am not one to measure. So. We'll just guess that. Uh, and then we're going on with the splash guard. So this is just going to use the high heat mode. So if you think uh, anything that you would stand at the stove and like fry off, so onion, bacon. Um, I've actually roasted peanuts in my thermomix using the high heat mode um, before making peanut butter. And it was delicious. So that's going to um, sauté for five minutes. Um, and then, yeah, we'll jump over to someone else and come back. Awesome. Thank you, Christy. I love that idea of roasting peanuts on the high heat mode. That's awesome. All righty. We're going to jump back over to you, Gem. Are you ready to roll out those scones? 
I have just added some butter, some flour and some cheese. I'm just going to add some milk, add my reserved bacon and onion. Combine that and I'm just going to, um, it's going to be on dough mode for 30 seconds and I can roll it out. Beautiful. So I'm just playing in my milk. So good how the scales are like one gram, like just so accurate. But I also get really over like overwhelmed when my scales are like, you know, five grams out. So you just want to be really perfect. <laughs> so this is the bacon and onion that's sauteed and it just chopped up for two seconds. So it's nice and fine. Obviously, if you wanted it more fine or you want it more chunkier, you could have um, you could have adjusted the speeds. Obviously, the great thing is um, when you are sauteing, whether it's bacon, onion, mushrooms, peanuts, um, anything like that, is that you do have a little bit of a browning in the bottom of your bowl, but there is a mode for that in your pre-clean, um, which heats your bowl up more to a certain temperature so it's easier to come off. So I'm just inserting my lid, and it's going to be on dough mode for 30 seconds. I can't remember off the top of my head, but maybe someone else could touch base on like how many times the phone exists to roll in your hand. Was that with the dough mode gem? Sorry, I sort of cut yeah. out a little bit. Yeah, so two minutes of kneading in your thermomix is the equivalent to 20 minutes by hand. Yeah. How amazing is that? Yeah, so I'm just going to get my bread mat out. So it's done. It's time to transfer the dough into my silicon bread mat, which is lightly floured or a lightly floured work surface. I tend to be a little lazy, I guess you could say, and I leave my bread mat floured um, sure because it is a convenience for me. A lot of the doughs I use are quite sticky because, um, like I said, I kind of just I add lots of things to my um, doughs. Obviously, makes it a little bit wetter, so it makes it hard to roll out. But that is my dough. It's a quite of a sticky dough, so you do need some extra flour. It's telling me to gently shape into some bowls and flatten with your hands into a disc, 1.5 centimetre thickness. Uh, using a scone biscuit cutter, nut, which is nine centimetres, cut dough into rounds and place to collect it together on your prepared baking tray. So a little tip is that you can actually grab your um, blades from the bottom and you can just give it a twist and it usually helps just break up your dough so it's easier to come out. And if it is still quite sticky, you can place your so mix back on and swipe over to your modes and go to turbo and hit that for a couple of seconds. And that just gets everything off your blades so it's easy to scrape down. So again, you're not wasting anything. all come off my blades so now I can just scrape it out. I have a little bit of extra flour before I try roll it out. Um, I actually don't have a scone cutter. Some of you might find this really funny but this is my scone cutter. I've had to make do with what I have. But I tend that work, I find that it works very well. I have used it multiple times. Um, do you want to know a little secret, Jim? Yes. You use a measuring cup as a cutter, as a strong cutter. <laughs> I did think of that, but then I thought I have to like unhook them all. So then I was like, well, maybe I could use a cup. And then I come across a wine glass and I was like, that is perfect. <laughs> So if you, um, like I said earlier, it was very versatile. So if you were going to add capsicum or another little hidden veg, um, it's quite important to drain the excess liquid out of it um, in a tea towel or paper towel or something similar to that. Um, this recipe is super versatile, so you can make it dairy-free with your um, 
butter or a cheese. You can also make this gluten-free, so substituting your flour for gluten-free flour, anything like that. So I'm just going to roll this out and use my wonderful scone cutter. As Laura um, said earlier, it's so great that the thermic, thermix mat has the measurements on the sides so that gives you a rough estimate of how you need to roll things out. I find it super helpful. And just to dust my wine glass in flour before I chop it, just makes it easier to clean. And I'm just going to cut these up and pop them on my prepared um, tray. And then it's telling me to brush the surface with an extra bit of milk, then bake for 15, 15 to 20 minutes at 220 degrees or until golden. And it's just telling me to serve warm with butter. Um, I'm actually making these today um, there's a lady down the road that just had a baby. So I'm making these um, scones and I'm going to drop them off um, in the morning for her. I know how tough it is being a new mum, not having a time to obviously be able to enjoy the little things or nice things than you did before. So I thought this would be great um, so she can just have a snack. <laughs> I'm just popping them on. So obviously you can you can space them out or you can put them close together depending how you like them. Obviously if they are close together, they're going to form together. So you kind of just break them off. But I'm sure whoever's on after me, um, I can jump over to them and I'll show you the finished product later. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jem. And she is going to love that delivery tomorrow morning, I'm sure. How lucky is she? All righty, back over to you, Christy. Just going to find you so I can spotlight you. Perfect. Um, okay, so I'm adding in tomato paste now. So I like to freeze off tomato paste because um, I'm lining like big tins. Um, and obviously I don't use it all at once. So the leftovers goes into the freezer um, and then I can just snap off what I need as I go along. So you need the tomato paste and my corner spice. It's asking for 20 grams. I don't quite have the 20, but that's okay. It's not gonna make much of a difference. Um, Popping the lid on with the simmering basket on top. That's just going to cook off for two minutes. Um, so one thing I love about my thermomix is um, I don't really have to think about dinner anymore. I can just sort of, you know, type some ingredients into what you do and get a whole bunch of recipes to pick from um, and try things that I would never normally cook. Um, yeah, I would never have thought to, I didn't even really know what a corner was before having a <laughs> mix. Um, yeah, and I, at the end, am going to, um, I've just already pre-cooked some, so I'm working with real limited vegetables here. Um, I've cooked up some brown rice using the rice cooker mode. So if you haven't already adjusted your filters on Cookie Do, I definitely recommend that you do it so that you only have uh, English selected and no countries because that recipe is actually, uh, I think, an American recipe and it's in ounces. So another great thing about the Thermomix is it automatically converts from metric to imperial. You don't have to do the thinking. Um, yeah, and love my rice cooker mode. I don't cook rice any other way. I literally put the rice in, put the water in, some salt, and I am sneaking out a little bit of oil as well. Uh, turn the dial and it cooks it for me. It's always fluffy. I've never had gluggy, dry rice using the rice cooker mode. But the trick is to use the right rice for the recipe. 
Um, so, yeah, if you've changed your filters so that it's just English and no countries, you'll have access to a whole bunch of different um, rice recipes. Um, yeah, absolute lifesaver. Like, I was able to cook the rice and then go for a walk around the block with my son. So, I uh, know that it's safe, know that it's not going to boil over on the stove or it's going to get stuck to the bottom of my rice cooker, like what would always happen. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's probably one of my favourite bones for us to be honest. Um, all right, so next we're just scraping down the sides. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, I'm actually sitting on a chair, so I don't know how many other kitchen appliances you can cook in and sit on a chair. Um, all right, going in with some, so this is uh, pouring cream. I'm actually making this one um, dairy free, so I'm just going in with. Um, some coconut milk, mainly because I had it in the fridge and I needed to use it up. So, pop all of this in. So, another thing I like, sorry, I'm in the way of it. Um, I like about the thermix is the ingredients to an extent are interchangeable. So, yeah. Um, like I said, I'm doing this dairy free, so instead of doing pouring cream, I'm just subbing it for a coconut base. Um, some yogurt, uh, 60 grams of natural yogurt, or whatever you've got on hand. I'm going in with coconut yogurt. I'm popping the lid back on. And I'm just going to blend that for a minute. Has anyone made this recipe before? What you said about the rice cooker mode, Christy, because I feel like that that is a mode of the TM6. <laughs> everybody else can um that not everybody's using the rice cooker mode so um that is a really great tip and to know that you love it and your little tip about um following the instructions and making sure it's the right right rice is amazing so i think that that'd be really helpful for a lot of people So I couldn't quite hear any conversation there over the machine. Um, so, I mean, look, you could very well go out and buy like a corner recipe base from the supermarket, but let's face it, if you actually stand and read the ingredients, um, there is quite a um, few nasties in there. So I love the fact that with a few simple ingredients, I can make my own recipe bases. Um, and I feel like as a collective, we are becoming more conscious about foods that we're putting into our bodies and, and, and our families' bodies as well. So, yeah, having a thermomix, um, yeah, makes it a lot easier to make sauces like this. And this is so bright, vibrant. I think I probably could <laughs> um, be heavy on the turmeric, but that is okay. <laughs> So that is our um, recipe base there, uh, sauce. Um, we're going in with 400 grams of skinless chicken. The lid is going back on. Now that's just going to cook away uh, for 12 minutes, 100 degrees for uh, feed one. Already preset, um, just have to turn dial and now I can walk away and go do something else for 12 minutes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christy. Laura, how are you going over there? Are you ready for your next step? 
Um, yeah, definitely. They've got a bit more time in the oven, I think. They're not quite done, but um, I want to make the honey butter if that's all good. Perfect. So, yeah, this one's really simple. I'm just going to get my chilled butter back out of the fridge. So it's starting to melt. Okay. All right, so, yeah, this one's um, about 120 grams of unsalted butter. Uh, but... What you can do as well is if you're not quite, like you don't want to make quite as much, you can, you know, half these recipes and everything. And I did want to mention that because very soon, like right now, we have um, some consultants trialing a new recipe scaling um, function so that you can choose recipes from Cookie Do and select how many people you want to cook for. Um, and it will basically do all the maths for you. So kind of like Christy just said, how Thermomix changes all the units and everything for you, it's going one step further and it's going to be doing the maths and doing the halving or the doubling or, or whatnot for you as well. So I just think that's pretty exciting and I can't wait for that to come. Um, go on to the days of having, you know, too many leftovers or anything like that if you're cooking for two and, and whatnot. All right, I'll focus on what I'm doing because I need about, I think I need all of this. Yeah, I do. I'm not going to bother getting more butter out. So that's just under 100 grams. And I'm quite happy with that much. I think that'll be plenty to go, go around. Um, so we're just going to be mixing that up. My lid. So while my scrolls were cooking, I put both my TM6 bowls um, in their pre-clean mode as well, which was super handy. Now I've got really no dishes to do. <laughs> Just kind of whipping that butter up a little bit more, making it nice and soft. Let's see with my spatula. So I had put it back, maybe it was in the fridge a tiny bit too long. It was meant to be softened, but it was like starting to melt. It's so hot in here. So um, I think that's pretty good to just kind of start mixing some like flavors through. So let me know in the chat box. Have you made your own flavoured butters? Have you made like a garlic butter, a herb butter? Um, one of our favourite dishes to do is the um, low-carb high-fat Kiev. They are so delicious, but the butter, like the herb butter that you make, goes in them. It's just my favourite. Um, what am I doing? Oh, I meant to give that another little bit of a blend. That's my fault. Ten more seconds. So yeah, we are really just like whipping this butter until it's nice and pale. Uh, much like you would do if you were creaming butter and sugar. Um, so, you know, that's a really big one I, I find I help a lot of customers with as well is converting recipes, especially like um, their family favourite, you know, cookie recipe or whatnot, to do in the Thermomix. Creaming butter and sugar seems to stump a lot of people when they first get to Thermomix. Like, how do I cream things in the Thermomix? It's quite simple, honestly. It is like speed four or five with your sugar and stuff, just like you would with your mixes, but you don't have to stand there and get a sore arm. Um, so, yeah, now this is a butterfly whisk going in. So, it's yeah, that's quite pale there now. Um, I don't know if you can see. The lighting's pretty bad, but it's definitely gone paler in colour. So, I'm happy with that. And then I just use my butterfly whisk that I did get out. There we go. It's funny how things can be right in front of you and you still lose them as a mum. Anyway, that's my, my worst trait. Again, um, a video's come up here. I don't know if you can see it, but just showing you how to insert your butterfly whisk. Um, there's nothing fancy with a butterfly whisk, but what I will say, just as a little reminder, is try and pop it in between the two blades that are um, a little bit closer together, so the narrower angles. If you're not sure what I mean, reach out to a consultant and they can explain that to you. Um, it'll just prevent it from popping up off all of the time. If you are doing things that are maybe just a little bit chunkier or you mashed potato or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> technically, there is a right and wrong way to, yeah, put your butterfly whisk on. But nothing will go, go wrong if you've done it wrong. Um, so about 60 grams of honey here. I'm getting a bit low on, so, yeah, that's perfect. And a little bit of vanilla, which I'm actually just going to use. I don't often, um, I should have got it out before, but I don't often use vanilla um, extract. I don't know, I find, you know, we do try and watch what's in our food these days and, and giving you know, things with alcohol and preservatives and things in it. Um, so I have got myself just some ground vanilla powder here. 
which you can find online in a lot of places. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in. So add the nice, you know, those flecks of kind of darker colours that you'll see when you're using vanilla bean. Uh, and that's it, just blending it together, whipping it together. I think those scrolls have got a little bit more colour on them now, so they won't be long to pull out, I would say. I don't, I didn't actually set a timer. It was meant to cook for about half an hour, but I like to go by start and smell a little bit more. So it just asked me to whip that up again, but actually I'm not sure if it will need it. You can see it's pretty well blended through there. It's looking really good. I feel like this is going to be so delicious paired with that cinnamon. Um, there's a tiny bit of honey, I think, at the bottom. So we'll give it that one more. One more go. But yeah, I'll tell a funny story about um, my butterfly whisk. So when I first got a Thermomix, God, over eight years ago, I didn't really have a consultant supporting me. Um, I did buy one for a consultant, um, and I'm glad that we did have, uh, I had that option. Um, but I, I guess I've always been someone who likes to figure things out on my own. Well, I learnt my lesson because I went above speed four with my butterfly whisk and chopped it into pieces, <laughs> trying to whisk up something one day, um, following actually a Pete Evans um, recipe from one of his cookbooks, so just manually doing things. Funnily enough, Dale ran into Pete Evans today um, up here in Queensland, so told him how much I loved his cookbooks and it was really great. <laughs> Didn't get a photo for me, though, which I'm a bit... I'm a bit sad about, so. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that can just be transferred to a little container to take along. Um, if you're, yeah, taking it over to someone's place for a nice little bowl, so I'll pop that into something. And then I'm going to grab my scrolls out now, I think. So tell me, who have you met that's famous um, or, like, who's your most famous person you've run into? <laughs> um, let me know in the chat box while I'm getting this out. And let me know if I've missed anything, any questions there, Nat, too. I feel like I haven't. There's about nine messages there. And it said her butter with sage, chives and parsley. Oh, Sarah, that sounds delicious. Right, that'll do. Right, I'm going to get these out and show you. Is that, if that's all right, are we moving on, Nat, or do you yeah, want to show yeah, these? Yeah, go for it. Cool. All right. Now, I find that gluten-free baking, I don't know, I find the doughs and breads often have a paler colour too, so um, keep that in mind as well, just compared to your normal scrolls. I feel like they're always just that little bit lighter and paler, but there they are in my little tin. They're going to be a bit too hot for me to like get out and put anywhere for a while, I'd say, but there they are sitting in their nice little rose gold dish. Um, if you were someone who was a bit more into measurement, what I would suggest is using your mat, being careful with how you cut your scrolls and making them the same height is a really good touch as well for aesthetics, but um, I was more about just getting it done tonight as well for you guys. So, yeah, they've worked out really, really well. I, um, I've only made them once once before, um, but I'm quite happy with them paired with their little butter. So I'll get a nice photo of that and maybe you guys will get that in an email tonight or tomorrow to hang that. Awesome. Thank you. All righty. So, Christy, I'm assuming yours has still got – how long have you still got on your cook time? Uh, it took about two and a half minutes. All righty. I might just quickly make my um, capsicum dip. So bear with me as I try and go from this audio to my other audio. That could be a total disaster, but watch this space. Can everybody hear me? We yeah, can. I'm still spotlighted. 
Oh, hang on a minute. I'll just go spotlight myself. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Awesome, thank you. All righty. I'm just gonna get my ingredients out of the fridge. Bear with me. Just going to make um, tonight uh, the capsicum and sun dried tomato dip. This is my absolute favorite dip to make in the thermomix. I'm just going to go into my wheat and I've saved that there. So it's just a nice, quick, and easy recipe. And I thought it's always a good one to bring over to somebody's house. Um, always nice to have, you know, some cheese, some dip, and some crackers. So I'm going to get start cooking. And it's asking for 30 grams of Parmesan cheese. I'm going to tear my scales to zero and pop that in. Press next and add one garlic clove. Next, we're gonna pop our lid on and 10 seconds on speed nine. That does not sound right. What did I have in my thermomix that I didn't take out? Hang on a minute. No. Okay. I'll just pop that back onto speed nine. Alrighty, it's nice to scrape down the sides of the mixing bowl. Grate it up beautifully. Scrape that down. Alrighty, press next. And 100 grams of sun dried tomatoes. Has anybody, well, what's everybody's favourite dip to make in the same mix if they're making dips at the moment? 100 grams. Can't go past the hummus. Pardon? Uh, half a red capsicum. I just and said that. I think it's after hummus. Oh, just cool. Thank you. <laughs> and 120 grams of cashews. And some olive oil. Beautiful. And 10 grams of white vinegar. I love how my scales just automatically tear when I press next. It's so quick and easy. And we're going to pop the lid back on, press next. And that's just going to go on turbo speed. And it's saying turn speed select to five to seven times on turbo speed. So I'm just going to. I'm just going to check that because I like my um, dip a little bit more on the crunchy side of things. So we'll just have a little look. Yeah, that's perfect. So we can see that there. I'll just pour it into a bowl. So if you have not given this dip a go, that is how quick and easy it is. There we go. And also, I wanted to show you guys, I made some crackers earlier today. These take no time at all, probably like a maximum of 10 minutes and then it's just cook time. But these are um, uh, cheese crackers on recipe community. So you can import them over to your Thermomix, but super, super quick and absolutely delicious. Once you've had these, you will not want store brought crackers again. So um, definitely give them a go. Awesome. I'm just going to turn this off and head back over to Christy. So mine is done um, at the end of that cook time. I just had to add in a teaspoon of garam masala and stir it in. Um, and I've just popped some in a bowl. So I hope that you can see that. I wish you could smell it because it smells amazing. Um, there, is that? Yeah, it's unreal. So super quick, super easy. You could definitely, definitely um, bulk this out by doubling the chicken. Um, it was only 400 grams of chicken, so you could easily double that because there is quite, I'll just show you. 
there is quite a bit of sauce. Um, so yeah, you could definitely add in some hidden, hidden veggies. You could double the chicken. Um, yeah, it, it smells amazing. <laughs> Awesome. And that's my yeah. <laughs> Delicious. How quick and easy was that? Yeah, and I think so all up. Um, it's a total prep time of 15 minutes. Uh, I wouldn't say it was even that. It probably took me maybe 10 minutes um to um chop the onion, the garlic, the chicken, and then get out the rest of the ingredients. And it's a total cook time of 30 minutes. So it'll be a really great meal um, if you are somebody who is really pressed for time at the end of the day and you've literally got next to no time to get a healthy, nutritious meal on the table. You can definitely add the veggies into this. Um, for the little, little kids or the bigger ones, if, um, yeah, they don't like veggies very much, but um, super quick. Super quick, um, nutritious meal. Awesome, thank you, Christy. And Jam, are those um, scones ready? They are. I've got another bulb in the oven, but here are the scones. Yum! They look delicious. They smell so good. I recently just got my wisdom teeth out, so I, I can't enjoy these, but. I'll freeze some. I know that they freeze really well, so I'll freeze some and I'll pop them out next week, hopefully when I can eat some solid food again. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I think that is everybody now, isn't it? Well, I want to say um, a very big thank you um, to everybody who came along tonight. If you brought friends along, please let your consultant know because we want to make sure that you get a host reward on your um, bench or in your house, I should say. Um, and I want to say a really big thank you to the girls tonight for taking the time out of their night to cook for us. So we do not get paid for putting on these cooking classes for you guys. We do it because we want to support you in your Thermomix journey. And we really love putting these classes on for you. So um, if anybody is not a TM6 owner and would love to get a Thermomix on their bench, we do have 40 months interest free and that is ending on Friday. So that makes the Thermomix $15.57 a week. So about $2.50 a day, which is amazing. Um, and the other offer that I wanted to tell you about was Earn4. So at the moment, if anyone is a TM6 owner and would love to get a second machine, because let's face it, two would be amazing, um, you can come on board our business and earn your second Thermomix in four sales. So you just need to come on and sell four Thermomixes to get another one on your bench, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you all again for coming. Um, it, it's been our absolute pleasure. And again, thank you for your generosity in the donations as well. Have a lovely night, everyone. And if the girls, if you could just stay on for a photo at the end, that would be amazing. Thanks ladies for coming. <clears throat> I'm just going to